Alright, hello. This is my second time recording because I forgot that my recording software doesn't record full screen stuff. Um, anyway, so I'm making this video. I don't usually make videos, but I'm making this video to show off and hopefully let other people use three things that I've made um, on the Project Ozone mod pack in Titan mode 1.7.10 um, and they're all two of them are computer craft related and one of them is just timing um, so I'm going to do the simplest one first which is yeah, doesn't look the, look the simplest um, which is just an easy way if you have Batania for you to be able to automatically make and harvest living rock. And also this works with um, anything else that the pure daisies make. You just need a way to push the blocks up. So the way that this works is we've got a bunch of um, block breakers connected by Ender IO redstone conduits to whatever channel you want. And behind them, because they spurt out kind of like dispensers, um, I've got some glass cover micro blocks. Uh, then, um, to actually place this stone that'll be turned into living rock, I've got some block placers. Just two here, two here, two here, and two here. And they're what place the items. Um, it's nice that block placers place uh, whether or not they are be they're having redstone pulsed, but um, you need to pulse redstone to block breakers for them to actually break anything. So I'm going to cut the halt signal to this, um, and it's going to run in about 70 seconds, just so that you can. So once this pulses once, it toggles this, which um, changes this redstone torch to off. Then this will, this is on the negative side, so it changes it to positive 12. Then this goes for 12 because that's how far they can push. Um, and it pulses 12 pulses of redstone to these eight pistons, which well, um, push 12, push down blocks up 12 times. And that's how this mechanism works. It's just a uh, timer on takes 60 seconds for pure daisy to process, so it's the timer for 60 seconds plus that extra 10 for them to push up the stone. And then, of course, some hoppers. So I'll, I'll let this go, just so that you can see it. The timer's about to go. They get hit, there's a... there we go. And they push it up really fast. I'm going to turn this back off because um, I have more than enough living rock. Alright, on to the second thing. Um, it's a... I wanted a way... If you're familiar with... Um, is this the ground floor? Yes, it is. If you're familiar with Ex Nilo, you'll know that um, if you sift dust, you get a bunch of stuff from it. And since I'm playing Skyblock, essentially, my only way of getting ore is from dust. Or... Um, laser drillers, but those are ridiculous and I'm not going to get those until I have like a cow death factory or something. Um, but I wanted to be able to, or, uh, to, to monitor how many, how much dust I have. So the way that I did that was first I needed to get a redstone output for each of the drawers, so I had a comparator or barrels, you can do this with barrels too. I had a comparator. Henry? Hey. How do I look? Like a million dollars. Pretty good. So I had a comparator, and it goes to... It's attached to the um, front of each drawer. And you'll notice they're slightly staggered. That's because I... My first version, um, I wasn't able to specify a threshold for the comparators, you, if you're familiar with Project Red comparators, you can subtract things from them. So if I've got, and, and these drawers output 
let's say this drawer is half full and I'll put 8 out of 15. Um, and if you put a 3 on the side, on the negative side of the comparator, this is getting an 8 from the back, it'll output 8 minus 3. So the goal is only output 1 um, if it's over the threshold. So that's what I've got here. And um, these outputs go to different channels on two different uh, bundled cable lines that go to a computer where I have a program. I'm also going to link the program in the description, but um, it just takes those signals and if they're all one, then it'll it'll stop. It'll output a red sound signal through um, the front in this case, which toggles the production because when it outputs through the front, it turns off this item conduit and it stops supplying them with dust. Reboot this. It also has a pretty fancy pantsy display. One of the main features of both of these programs is that these are not, the parts of these are not hard coded. The names of the dusts um, from left to right have to correspond to the um, insulated wires from left to right uh, you know, in the standard Minecraft scheme, white, orange, magenta, light blue, etc. Um, you, the way that they're not hard coded, though, um, it there's a list of dusts that gets displayed. As you see, this is P period gold, osmium, aluminum, etc. This is what gets linked with a um, successive series of. Um, colored insulated wires. This is what. This is how it knows. So that's the only part of. That's the only setup you have to do. You have to make sure that they're in order. If you want to switch them, um, for example, if I put, uh, if I put this titanium where this iron was, um, an easy way to fix that would be switch powdered titanium with powdered iron in this, in this file. And this works. I did this for all of the only things that I changed, on the other levels. So this one sifts sand, it's on. This one sifts dust, it's on. Um, the only thing that I changed was the names. Um, and sometimes there's a there's a few more, so make sure that there's enough. These aren't, I never did any unit tests on any of these, so these are you know, awful, like, kludges of, of solutions to these problems. But you can also, uh, the 8 fifteenths full and other sleeping time, etc., they're hard-coded, but they're at the top of the... Um, they're at the top of the uh, the Lua file, so that's easy to edit. Alright, and the third and final thing that I've done... Oh, right, I also uh, made one a quote-unquote dust compare program for flowers, and the everything is the same, um, except for, and even the output is the same, for... Um, setting the threshold for the comparators, but the toggle, production toggle, uh, is actually the same. You know, handler for it over here is different, just a timer and some other good stuff. So the last thing that I wanted to show, which is I'm very proud of, and it's completely unnecessary, um, because you can do this with applied energistics, and it's a lot easier, and it's a lot easier to automate, but what this does um, this takes in two text files. One is a list of recipes. You can also replace this with... You can actually change this to anything. You could um, change this to anything that involves sending ingredients with red sand pulses if you'd like. But what it does, it takes two text files. One of them defines a bunch of recipes and, uh, and a recipe is made up of a bunch of ingredients prefixed by the number of the ingredients and suffixed by a comma to denote the next ingredient. It's kind of like like you know, human speech or you know something that's human readable. Um, and then it takes them into an, takes them into an array shown on the right side of the screen. Um, and that's all nice and dandy, but that doesn't actually get us uh, redstone pulses needed to drop the items. Hey guys, uh, I'm recording this because I just realized that I said something 
um, that, and I, I realize that I forgot to explain a very important part of this program. It's kind of like the other one where you have to correlate the um, the different channels to uh, to things you want to monitor. Except here, I never explained how it knows what place or what channel is connected to a dropper that has the ingredient, and I'm going to do so now. So, actually, first, so in Minecraft, let's just look at the left. This is the left. Um, the left set of 16 redstone channels. I'm going to follow it. And then the white channel on the left side is white petals. Orange channel left side, orange. Magenta channel left side, magenta. It goes on like that until the top and they get auto supplied by a bunch of pipes. Um, so that's defined in a it's the second file called ingredients list where you've got your ingredient this could be anything um, you could name it white white petal you don't need the mystical but you'd have to update all instances of it um, for example here or else it wouldn't get resolved um, so we've got all of these and then these are things I'm going to implement I just wanted to clear that up because I didn't explain how that part of the program worked enjoy the rest of the video so the way that that's handled is there is a second text file called ingredients list or really whatever you want to call it that matches each ingredient hopefully defined in the recipes to a side this is assuming you're using the redstone.set I'll see you later Tony this is assuming that you're using the redstone.set uh, bundled output API um, it sets a side you, you, the user defines a side and a color channel for it, and those are also set, um, saved into an array. This is using textutils. Serialize. It just saves it into, it exports the array as something that's human readable and importable as an array object, which I like because I, you know, it's easier to demonstrate this. Um, so that's how that does it. So, and then just in here there's a loop that runs for however many of the next number I'm about to type. You know what? Let's do zero because I realize that I don't want to do that. I want to do something because pure daisy is too easy. It has four of the same. Let's, but let's do something. Let's do day blooms. They have three different ingredients and one of the ingredients has two things. Or there's two of one of the ingredients. So let, let's do a day bloom. Let's do three day blooms. So you'll see it drops those. It just made one. Made a second one. This is assuming you line them up, you know. You define them in the file, then you put them in the correct spot. Okay, it's done. So now it's going to pulse there, and then that has this um, acquisition wrapper item grabber um, get them. And that's it. That's that's my awful programs. This is probably a lot, this is, I'm explaining this a lot worse because I did a 10 minute video and it, none of it recorded, so pardon me if any of this makes absolutely no sense, but you know, hope you enjoyed my video and probably not going to make another one of these for a long ass time. I'm also going to replace, this is, this is depressing, this is so much worse than this. This is my um, runic altar setup. And this is my uh, pedal apothecary setup. I'm gonna have to scrap all of it, or I'm going to replace it with an AE system because it's just so much smaller. But feel free to use my code. I don't. There's no licenses. You can just download it. I don't care. Anyway, well, have a good rest of your day, whoever you are watching this.